Good morning, y'all. It's Wednesday, and I have a bunch of moves to make, as you would expect. So let's see, what are we going to do here? I'm playing uh, Knight Rider 2. Seems like my next move's pretty obvious. Just going to go ahead and push this pawn, because you know what they say, the past pawn must be pushed. Oh, by the way, uh, Googleplex here, he uh, offered me a draw. Like, uh, late last night or early this morning, depending on how you look at it. It's probably like 1.30 in the morning. So yeah, I think I'll just push that pawn. Um, be interesting to see if you know I decide to take a rook that moves to d8. I don't know. But yeah, that pass pawn's going to be annoying. I don't know. Hopefully I can hold it. If I lose that pawn, then it'll probably be a forced draw. Alright, so here's a three-player game. Managed to Gets Sport Timber's rook. He was, uh, he fell asleep at the wheel and hung his, um, rook to my Fianchetto bishop. It's one reason why I like the Fianchetto in this game all the time. It's so easy just to hang a rook. I've done it myself. Okay, so right now, white's being pretty peaceful and straightforward with development. And black has hung a rook and, uh, probably the best thing for me to consider doing is just to back off of this bishop. So, I don't know, should I just back off the bishop? I don't really have anything better to do. Oh, I could actually win this pawn here. That actually could be the better move. Yeah, I think that might be better. I have to, I have to be careful, you know, because white could take advantage of the fact that black and I are kind of skirmishing over here. So, but yeah, when in doubt, take a pawn, why not? I don't see any reason not to. Got the queen on it, right? Alright, I don't want to trade queens, that's for sure. So, Let's do that, because I'm not castling kingside. Alright, we got double chess, my favorite four player variant. Alright. So we trade it over here. I'll, I'll give up a knight for a bishop any day of the week in this game. But I shouldn't say that because knights can can be pretty good. There are some really big boards where knights are very inferior to bishops, but that's not always the case in this one, but usually more so than an 8 by 8 chess, I think. But it's all about, you know, move order, doubling up, teaming up against people. Okay, so I don't really know what these few, what these bishops are doing on the same diagonal. I mean, what, they might get this pawn, but probably not. So who cares? Okay, I'm trying to figure out what they're doing. Are they even doing anything here? Here's my partner. Oh, my partner's not very good. He's kind of a new, but you know what? The moves he's making in this game aren't bad. So maybe he's learning. Okay, so... Hmm. Hey, you know, more annoying would have been if Yellow had put his... Or their bishop right there on h4. With that in mind, it might not be a terrible idea to push this pawn. But I don't know, I don't want to recapture with the queen and then have the bishop come after me, the Yellow Bishop. So, I'm quite inclined to just move this bishop up to l6, or I could push this pawn. Yeah, actually, pushing that pawn's not bad. Yeah, because I need to get this light square bishop out. So let's just do this. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, the only downside of that, actually, is that um, red can now check me, so maybe that wasn't the greatest move. I'm not sure. We'll see. So white fiend chatted here. This is a three half chess. Every man for himself. Or every person for themselves. Don't want to offend anyone. Okay, so um what oh wow. Okay, so white's fiend chatted for some reason. Well, not really fiend chatted, just created really if you think about it, I don't, I don't really understand why white um which by the way the this guy right here is the same guy who was my partner in double chess a second ago. So why did he push that? pawn there in front of the king that just creates weaknesses around the king okay so i developed a knight black castle and now white has done something that does make a lot of sense and that is taking over the center but that will probably lead to a lot of trading in the middle probably the best thing for me to do is just to get out of dodge with my king but i don't know should i castle king side or queen side 
It's safer to castle kingside because of black, but it's safer to castle queenside when you consider white, I think. So, overall, I'm going to go probably just castle this way. I think short is the way to go. All right. So, I think that's about it. Oh, look, there's some new person down here. Always got to look for those new games and new players. I'm kind of like the gatekeeper here on Green Chess. I just, uh, anybody that's new, I always make sure to accept invites. So, you know, normally I just take almost every invite down here. I'm like, you know, take all comers, all variants. But I have gotten to the point where I've just kind of lost interest in four-handed chess one and two. I just don't really care for it. In case you're wondering what that board looks like, if you haven't seen it in my previous videos, this is what it looks like. And this was one of the very first variants I ever played and bought um, the actual equipment for from the U.S. Chess Federation. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just not really my thing anymore. I like double chess so much better. I think double chess spoiled it. Let's see if I have any. Nope. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're all caught up. So um, make sure to like and subscribe, share this video, and we will see you next time.